This week on Taste Utah, it's all about the dough. We're in St. George at Farmstead Bakery. This European-style bakery is celebrating dough in a myriad of ways, from donuts to ready-to-eat baguette sandwiches, laminated pastries, and even grandma pizza. They're adding a thick layer of handcrafted goodness to Southern Utah's food community, and their growing fan base could not be more grateful or enthusiastic. Then we hit up Ma's Artisan Pizza in Provo. Yes, more pizza. But friends, let me tell you, the pizza that Aaron and Jared are creating in Utah County is extraordinary. Their store is a vehicle to showcase local farm fresh ingredients. They're making their dough with living starters, hand pulling their own mozzarella, and then you got it, shredding it for your pizza. They're redefining hospitality in Utah County by creating a space that's inviting and inclusive to all. Taste Utah is more than your typical food show. It's about local flavor from roots through authentically Utah restaurants. It's the people and the places that make Utah a dining destination. There's so much soil and earth to uncover and still so many great Utah restaurants to savor. We bring in the stories and we spread the love. The best thing about Utah, the views along the way, they're not bad either. We're not afraid to get our hands just a little dirty. Food is a necessity. It's how we create it and share it and experience it together that truly shapes our community. Whether you're choosing to dine in our dining rooms, order to go, or get delivery, you always have a seat at this table. Are you ready to taste Utah? We're in St. George, Southern Utah, and we're on Tabernacle Street. We're visiting Farmstead Bakery. We love to reach out and have local foodies reach out to us as well. So the food gods on Instagram, they recommended this place last year. I can't wait to introduce you to Chris, and we're gonna talk about all of the amazing breads, delicious pastries. Let's go get our taste on, shall we? Chris. Hey, Katie, how are you? This space is gorgeous. Yeah, let's go, let's go taste. All right, you got, a, you got a table for me? I got everything for you. All right, lead the way, right. my friend. Yeah. Chris, this place is a bumpin'. Yeah, there's a line out the door usually um, probably four or five hours a day. When people were saying, you've got to come visit, you've got to come visit, I had no idea what was in store for me. Yeah, and when I originally built this, I was like, okay, they're just gonna come in, go to the display case, pick out their stuff. Yeah. I had no idea that I had to prepare for like a line going out the door yeah. and to the sidewalk. I'm a little disappointed because I was hoping that we would have like some bread on the table. Yeah, yeah, we don't have any bread. <laughs> no bread, no carbs. This is amazing. Yeah. So not only are you doing these amazing artisan loaves, sort of beautiful and decadent, but then you're also doing a ton with pastry and laminated dough. And I even see donuts or like yeasted dough. Our, our bakers get here at around 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, they start, you know, with with pulling all the bread um, and doing the baguettes and doing the sourdoughs and doing the croissants. And then we have a person come in and they do all the donuts. And then we have another person come in and they start all the sandwiches and do all the salads. And then we have a, a another person come in around 11, do more of what we've already done. Oh my gosh. Um, so everything is made the way we make it. It's very and European. It's very European, yeah. yeah. And it's a European style bakery yeah. is what I tell people. They're like, well, what are you? I'm a European style bakery. That's you what we really are. are. You but see the Quinamans. I mean, and that right? is the yeah. king of pastry. Yeah. yeah. And if you can do a good Quinamon, yeah. uh, you're going to be put on the map. So basically, for people who don't know, you're basically taking layers of dough, sprinkling in sugar in the lamination process Correct. so that when you bake it in the oven, it becomes this kind of like ooey, gooey, caramelized center yes. and then with a hard crisp outer shell. Exactly. So you bake it up like this. We yeah. show ours like this because you could always tell a good point of on and if yes. you tap on it, I mean it's um you know it's kinda hard and that's actually different in every place you go. Like San yeah. Francisco, a little bit more humidity. Salt Lake City, a little bit more humidity. Yeah. You know, we did uh, a triple baked almond. This is a triple baked chocolate. Okay. This is Whoa. my favorite. That's a cheese Danish. I could eat yeah. those all day, every day. Okay. Um, the BLT, 
Uh, okay. We heat those bad boys up, and uh, you know that's fresh mozzarella baked nice. in. Nice. So you will heat that up. We always offer to heat that oh, one awesome. up because the melted mozzarella is like dynamite. How can you not yeah. like the melted mozzarella? The turkey of is our best-selling sandwich. Okay. Um, you know the monkey bread, cinnamon rolls. And then, the, are these stuffed pastries? Those or? are okay. stuffed. So that's raspberry, um, and this is key lime, oh. and um, and this actually we've had um, people from New Zealand come in recently and say this is exactly what we serve in New Zealand. What is this concoction? It's a s'more. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, this thing's awesome. My gosh. So we dip it in chocolate. What? Roasted marshmallow Yum. on the inside. Jeez. Uh, graham cracker cookie. Yeah. I mean, a this thing. A graham thing's, cracker cookie. This, this thing's insane. That's so innovative. I mean, your crew must have a lot of fun creating these things, huh? I was just back there and I was like, oh, that looks good. I, yeah. I've never even seen that before. This actually, some one of our regulars came in and we call this the tabernacle croissant. Okay. It's vanilla pastry cream inside. Oh my gosh. And, I love and this it. guy came back, he had one, and he's like, that's the best thing I've ever had. And he bought us out. He, he bought all eight. Of them. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so, um, you know, I came from like a um, corporate, somewhat corporate uh, world working at the Mirage in Las Vegas, the Wynn Hotel. Okay. So it was like when you wanted to change something, yeah. it took like 20,000 steps yeah. to change something. Water and, and they, tape. More, more often than not, they just say no. Yeah. You know, and then here That's it's such like, a okay, we're changing tomorrow. Yeah. Quick. Easy. It's like your team member can come up to you and say, like, Chris, I have an idea. And you can be like, love Done. it, go for it. And, and I really it, haven't yeah. turned down an idea. Yeah. I want them to think about it like my employees. I just want them to think about the good part and the bad part behind the idea and how we could implement yeah. it and how everyone can stay on the same page yeah. and then kind of go from there. And if it works in all those categories, then why not do it? You have the Tabernacle Croissant. This bakery has been open for about seven months. Yes. But this is not your first rodeo. You are a well-seasoned veteran restaurateur. Yeah, I, I guess you could say yeah. that a little bit. Um, so I have owned restaurants. My first restaurant I opened in Las Vegas. Okay. I saved up all my money. Yeah. Um, my wife saved up all her money working, you know, just uh, food and beverage, hospitality, yeah. jobs, industry. When I opened up the doors, I had a hundred bucks to my name. You are already resonating and beckoning people to what you're doing. It's something new, it's something unique, it's something that was needed, and For sure. such yeah. good energy and such good vibes here. Yeah. Everything that you're doing is like a calling card, like come and enjoy, we want to treat you well, we want to give you amazing fresh food. I'm just super lucky to do what yeah. I do and, um, and do it in, in such a beautiful place like St. George. It's totally. amazing. I can taste that care, that love, that authenticity in everything that you're doing. And it's really, really special. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for this conversation. It's just been so enriching. Um, and I would actually really love to pop back in the kitchen yeah. and make something with Let's you. Let's do it. I'm not the best okay. at doing it, just yeah. I'll forewarn you, but Let's do it together. Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's, I'm, I'm, I love getting my hands a little bit dirty. Cool. Cool. I'm gonna suit up. Okay. You're gonna suit up, yeah. and we're gonna. Um, let's do it. We're going to make some pizza. We're gonna make some pizza. Okay. So th we call this grandma style pizza. Okay. This is focaccia bread, okay. and what happened is grandma usually took the leftover focaccia bread. Okay. So we're gonna put a little. Tomato sauce on there, Classic a little marinara. Oh yeah, so this is marinara. So Correct. it's got the garlic, it's got the basil, it's got the whole thing. Exactly. Nice. It's great. And we sell up. so we sell it by the slice here. No, you're not being stingy with the cheese, which no. I appreciate. Uh, on Taste Utah, things tend to get a little cheesy. Okay, I'm gonna give you these. Oh my man! And you're gonna, thank you. you're just gonna kind of create rows. Okay. So my boys sometimes come back here and they help Aww. me with it. So okay. you're just wanna create rows with the. Uh, just a little with pepperoni. the pepperoni, yeah. Okay, cool. Once you finish that, we uh -huh. just kind of take a quite a bit of these. Ah, I'll a little just... sausage. Oh, yum! It's looks. I see fennel in there. I see. So it's like an Italian sausage. Exactly. Yeah. Now we've done this. This. This savory. We're gonna do some sweet stuff too. Yeah, we're gonna yes. do some sweet stuff. Okay, awesome. For sure. Croissants. Yeah. Okay. Let's do, let's do it. it. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, look at those. Those are amazing. Triple baked. Almond croissants. Triple bake. Tell me about that. So we're gonna take these out now. These these have just been baked for the, the third, third time. time. So you cut them in half. You put the almond paste in there. Bake them again. Bake them again. And then put them back together. Okay. And then bake them 
once one more. time. Oh, yep. that's and now we, so young. We kind of give them a dusting. Okay. So, put these on the board for you. Okay. Okay. We'll kind of give them a dusting of powdered sugar. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do it, and then You'll you probably, you could probably do it better than I can, but uh, you just kind of give it a little. Oh, gorgeous. That's the finishing touch. Just like there you a little, go. okay, here we go. Well, I've owned restaurants uh, for the last 15 years. Yeah. And I wanted to open up a bakery and I said, you know what, I'm gonna take a week long class at the San Francisco Baking Institute, yeah. which is like world renowned. And at the end of the class, I asked the instructor like, hey, where am I as far as being, you know, a baker? Yeah. And she's like, um, you know, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, you're probably a one or a two. Oh. And, uh, you know, that's when I knew, like, yeah. I'm, I'm in operations. Yeah. I knew I was in operations from the get-go. But, you know, taking courses like that, classes like that, really teach you so much about the chemistry, too, totally. about, about baking bread. It has just been such a beautiful experience to get to know you better, to learn about Farmstead. I mean, you're you're brand new. We've talked about this. You're a year in business operations. Uh, seven months. Seven months. Yeah, yeah. And it's like we couldn't not come and feature you because people in St. George or people who travel to St. George are raving about you. Yeah, and you know what? I just feel, I mean, I feel so fortunate. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been in St. George a little over a year, about a yeah. year and a half. And the community here has just kind of welcomed, welcomed us with open arms. And, yeah. and it's, I just feel fortunate being here. When you're doing the right thing, when you're radiating positivity, good vibes, the whole thing, you just attract those kinds of people. And they want to sing your praises. And they are. And this has just been a phenomenal experience. So just thank, thank you so you. much. Do you want to eat one of these? I mean, yes, please. Yeah, okay. let's tear them open. Oh my gosh. Provo, we're on University Avenue. I'm taking you to Ma's Artisan Pizza. We're about to go hear how they are handcrafting every single inch of this fantastic restaurant. Their pizza, phenomenal. Let's go sink our teeth into. Hey! Hi, Erin. How you doing? Good, I've been waiting for you. This is so fun to be here. I've got some pizza for us. You want to go have a little chat? Absolutely. And munch a little? I came hungry. Okay, cool. Let's do it. You guys are sourcing so many local products to make a pizza. I think people think, you know, pizza is so simple, but it actually is simple ingredients that shine together and there's a complexity yeah. to that and I imagine a complexity to s the whole sourcing process and sourcing story. For us that's the most important part of all of this. We want to be making healthy food for people and we want to feel good about what we're doing. So with the pizza that you have here specifically, this is our seasonal pizza, okay. which changes. Um, here we have our corn. Okay. We get the corn um, from a local farm stand called Harwards. We've got goat cheese on there. Okay. Then we have our red onions, which come from a local farm as well, okay. Stubbs. And the chimichurri, which is from Snuck Farms. So chimichurri is kind of an Argentinian style salsa. Yeah. Lots of herbs and garlic in there. Super so good, it's acidic. Yeah, mm -hmm. it makes that corn pop. You source seasonal ingredients and so the pizzas could change. Well, pretty much as soon as we are, we can't get the corn from the farm stand anymore, we'll be switching to okay. a different one. So Brussels sprouts are kind of a winter Item, I love it. so we'll be featuring a Brussels sprout pizza coming up. Okay. Um, it's got awesome bacon, which we're smoking in house with our awesome Traeger grill. You're and, smoking yeah. the bacon in house. Yeah. Oh, Traeger is so great too, right? Yeah, Another great. local Utah company. Yes. What do you have in front of you? I have our meat pizza, so everything on here is local as well. We down to the dough. I love um, that. Along with our daily stretch mozzarella. We get our curd from a farm in Camas okay. uh, called Gold Creek. Ashley and Fernando. Yeah. Yeah. So Fernando makes our curd for us. Oh, We've got these beautiful brown Swiss cows up there. It's the sausage from Clifford and then the yes. pepperoni so, from Criminelli. Yes, exactly. So we what actually- What they do best. Yeah, they I do. Um, and we make our sausage in-house, trim everything. And I have to say the dough is fabulous. These dark spots on here I'll call leopard spots. Mm -hmm. And these only show up when your dough is fermented properly. And not just as like a branding term or a buzzword or a marketing tool, but like 
everything is handcrafted. So from curing your own bacon to making your own sausage, pulling your own mozzarella, that's a process. We pull that mozzarella every day so yeah. that we have fresh, and it takes these guys, they can do about 25 pounds in an hour. <laughs> so the processes, I mean, 25 pounds isn't a ton. This is fresh. and it, hasn't been shredded before and there are no enzymes and preservatives on it. And yes. so this is just an impeccable quality that's going to nourish you and also like nurture your soul because it's yes. it's a gift that's been given from Fernando up at Gold Creek to then the hands here at Ma's to then the chef that's making the, the pizza that of the fresh mozzarella that's been pulled. I mean it's I couldn't have said it better myself. It really is, that's what we want to do for people is we want them to know we're inviting them into our lives and we're trying to give them something from our heart. You're doing amazing things. Um, I have to try this cookie. Yes, let's have one. Okay, you perfect. I'll take, I'll take half um, and just another like cheers. Oh, before I Boom. in my mouth. I mean, I, it was hard for me not to. Could I pop back in the kitchen with Jared? And yes, Just talk a little please. bit more about the- He knows everything. Kitchen layout, okay, yes. awesome. Karen, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jared, I just had such a lovely conversation with your wife about just all of the amazing things you're doing to create sustainability at Ma's and also like keep us amazingly fed. Uh -huh. So we're gonna make pizza. You're gonna make a pizza. I'm gonna make one too? Yeah. Yes, okay, <laughs> amazing. Um, but talk to us a little bit about the dough. So we were talking to Aaron about the dough and one of the things that you're doing here is is you're almost treating your dough like you would a, a bakery. Naturally leavened dough, which yes. is like a sourdough process. Okay. We use a 17-year-old, uh, 18-year-old Levain or a starter. Yes. That's in place of commercial yeasts. Nice. And um, it kind of imparts a more complex flavor profile. Yeah. As well as, because of the fermentation process, it's already kind of partially digested, so it's easier on your gut. Yeah. So even people who have gluten sensitivities generally are able to eat our dough. So I'm gonna scoop a couple of these out as okay. best I can, and then we'll work on the space here. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Just a little of that central meal flour. Uh-huh, yeah, nice. central meal flour. And are you just using like regular white flour? It's or? No, it's actually, it's called a double O or okay, double zero okay. or double aught, depending on who you talk to. Okay. Um, and that's a, a flour that's specifically milled for pizza and for high temperature applications. Okay. So it's, uh, and also for long fermentation. So you wanna use the flat parts of your finger. Okay. And you're going to dimple and make sure to leave the crust. Okay. okay so you're just dimpling in the middle and you're leaving a pretty, you know, an inch or so of crust. So there's a million ways you can do this, okay. but what we generally do here is I'll just put the back of my hand on it okay. and pick it up over it. Okay. So it's just, yeah. And then you get your other hand in there. Okay. And then you're just gonna pull your hands apart. And then you just turn it a quarter and do it again. And then, and then put it kind of close together in here. And okay. then you can just kind of work it in a circle. Okay. So we're gonna make the Suppressa pizza, okay. which features uh, several ingredients, most of which are local. Okay. So it's gonna have um, tomato sauce. You making that in-house? We make the tomato sauce in-house, okay. and then the mozzarella. We get the curd yeah. whole from Gold Creek Farms, and then we pour boiling water over it and yeah. salt, and then you literally just stretch it yeah. and it plasticizes, it turns into cheese. Yeah. And then we let it cool and then we and shred, then shred it. it. Mm -hmm. We put ricotta on it, which yeah. we also make in house, okay? And then it gets topped with sopressa. Okay. Take uh, the scoop and you want to level it off. You don't okay. want a heaping one, you don't want a low one. You just, just want a nice, nice little level. Level it off. There you go. Okay. And then dump it right in the middle. Okay. There you go. And then you're just gonna go, I go clockwise and I just kind of work my way out slowly. So we just slice real thin some garlic on there. Yeah. Just to give it a little pop the most dangerous tool in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, then I'm gonna take this bag of ricotta, oh, and I'm just gonna put some dabs. Just five of them like that, nice and pretty. Okay. And then you're Little just gonna dabs. just mirror okay. that one there. Little dabs, 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 dabs. Okay, and then just some of this mozzarella, just kinda. Like a handful? Yeah, just mm -hmm. right where. Yeah, that Get even some, feels fresh. Some coverage. Yeah, we do like a, a lower pH level in the mozzarella so that it's a little bit more of a dry mozzarella, a low yeah. moisture, as it were. 
um, it kind of gets a better result for what we're looking for. So grab a little stack there of the salami. Stack. And then I'm just gonna go around the outside, spaced about a half inch apart. Okay, so I'm gonna okay. show you and then you'll, I'll do one, you'll do one. Okay. okay, this is the, tell me what it is it's again. This, this is a peel. Peel. Yeah. Uh, I, I like. I want to call it a skin. I don't know why. It's so weird. We call them banjos. Okay, banjos. Yeah. So I'm gonna try to tap off just a little bit of that flower. Okay. That crack. Oh, you did that so well. Okay, so here you go. Okay, okay, and then you're gonna slide it in and jerk it back. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yay! That at least felt good. Okay. Oh, perfect. Yay! Yeah, so it just takes a few, like about two minutes. Okay. Oh, it's so pretty. And this one. So we cut them into six. Okay. Here I go. Perfect. Jared, this has been so fun. Number one, thank you for letting me make a pizza with you. Of course. Number two, just what you and your wife and your whole team are doing here, it really is so special. And so thank you for taking the time to just let us come here and show you off and just share your story. I mean, there's no shortcuts, there's no small stuff. Like you really are just making magnificent pizza, you're wanting to feed people, you're wanting to do what's right, and um, we're just grateful to have you as a part of our Utah restaurant food community. Well, thank you so much. All right, so I guess we take these to the table. Right. Yum. Manja. <laughs>